So how do you brake smoothly and get that chauffeur finish where the car comes to a complete standstill and you don't get that horrible shock through the car as you finish stopping? Let me show you. To help me demonstrate uh, how smooth it is, I've got this um, necklace that I've managed to find uh, in my other half's belongings. It's a necklace with a, it's a hot air balloon with a little teddy bear inside it. Can you see the little teddy bear? And I'm going to hang it up here. I'm going to call this the Joltometra 4000, just so it sounds official. And you can see how still that is or how much it moves. To break smoothly, you need to understand why it isn't smooth in the first place. And it all comes down to how you change your speed. It's not so much the rate at which you slow down, it's how quickly you change the rate at which you slow down. So if you're not slowing down at all, and suddenly you start slowing down a lot, you're gonna really feel that. That's gonna feel unsmooth. It's gonna be uncomfortable for your passengers. And if you're slowing down quite quickly and suddenly the car finishes stopping, that normally happens to everyone in the car as you go from leaning forwards to not leaning forwards, and that's not smooth either. With the joltometer, it's not so much about how much it's moving, it's how quickly it moves. So if it suddenly shoots forwards or backwards, that's gonna represent a very jerky movement in the car, but it could be moving forwards quite a lot, but I'm still doing it smoothly, and then as I finish stopping, it will gradually come back instead of going like that. It's gonna always be moving a bit, obviously, because the road is bumpy. So now I'm gonna brake quite harshly and finish quite harshly, and you're gonna see the poor teddy bear get flung forwards and flung backwards. I'll do that now. So hard on the brake, it goes flying forwards, and I don't let off gently at the end, and it goes flying backwards, and it's waving about for quite some time. To make it smooth, what you need to do is gradually increase the brake pressure until you get your desired level of braking. So instead of just pressing your foot on the brake suddenly, gradually press it more and more until you feel like, I'm slowing down quickly enough now. Then hold it there. Then you hold the brake pedal steady until you're nearly finished. Just before the car comes to a complete standstill, reduce your braking gradually. Try not to come off the brake quickly and try not to come off the brake all the way, otherwise you won't actually finish your stop. The last bit is generally the hardest bit because what most people tend to do is they come off the brake quickly. If you come off the brake quickly, you jolt back anyway, and they come off the brake too much or they just completely come off the brake, in which case you don't actually finish stopping, you just carry on rolling. The key is, to, is just to reduce the brake a small amount. The less you're braking as the car comes to a complete standstill, the smoother it will be. So if you're braking just 1% of your car's capability, it's gonna be a smooth stop. But if you're braking at 10% of your car's ability, it's gonna be a harsher stop. So this time I'm gonna try and demonstrate a very smooth stop. I'm gonna stop the car quite quickly from 30 miles an hour. But although I stop it quickly, our teddy bear here on the joltometer, should just call it a hot air balloon really, shouldn't I? Is gonna go forwards gently, and he's gonna come backwards gently, and he's not gonna fall out of his basket. So I'm doing about 30 miles an hour now, and I'm gonna stop the car quite quickly. So I'm gonna gradually increase the brake until we get the desired level, and then just as the car comes to a stop, just before it comes to a stop, I reduce the brake gradually, and now finish stopping. There's no sudden harshness there, the teddy bear in our Joltometer 4000 didn't get thrown forwards and then back and ended up waving around for ages. It was generally quite still. We went forwards gradually, a little bit of waving, as on a bumpy road, and then it came back gently. And he hasn't fallen out of his basket. I don't know if he's happy or not. What do you think? Look at his face there. Don't know if he's crying or trying to look for something. So this time I'm gonna show you the pedal more. I'm gonna stop from about 30 again. I gradually increase the brake. I've got the desired level of braking now. And just before the car finishes stopping, I gradually reduce the brake again until I'm completely stopped. It goes without saying that what will also help you brake smoothly is good planning, good foresight. 
having to brake suddenly will make the car brake in a harsh way. You're gonna feel that through the car and you're not gonna have time at the end of your stop to reduce the brake gradually to get that chauffeur finish. What you wanna do is actually start braking a bit earlier than you absolutely must to leave yourself a bit of time at the end to smooth things out a bit. For me, one of the most important things that determines how good a driver is or how accomplished a driver is, is how smooth they brake. Anyone can get a car going quite quickly, but if you can consistently, time and time again, slow the car down gradually and finish stopping smoothly, that shows that you have good experience and you're, you're prepared, you know what's coming, nothing's taking you by surprise. Braking smoothly is also more economical and it's better for your car. If you watch one of my previous videos, I think it's about three videos ago, I did a video on driving economically and one of the main factors that allowed me to achieve 61 miles to the gallon out of this petrol turbo 1.4 litre car, which I was quite surprised by, was just I spent a long time slowing down. I slowed down very gradually, very light braking over a long period of time. Whilst the car is slowing down, you're using little to no fuel. So you're getting that whole bit of road for free instead of leaving it to the last second. If you leave it to the last second, you're using fuel all the way up until that final moment when you start braking. What will make a huge difference to how easy it is for you to control that brake pedal is where you're sitting. Two weeks ago, I did a video on good driving position. I recommend you watch that to know how to get good setup so you can get good control over the pedals. But ideally you want your heel on the ground and you want your heel to be in a good place where you can pivot between the gas and the brake pedal quite easily and gradually increase the brake pedal with your heel on the ground. Once you get that desired level, hold it steady. If your heel's in the air, it's a lot harder to be gradual and it's a lot harder to hold it steady, particularly if you go over a bump. If you go over a bump, your heel in the air, you're likely to press harder, which is gonna make the car jolt a little bit as you're stopping. But heel on the ground, pivot between the two pedals, gradually increase the brake, hold it until you're nearly finished stopping and then just before the car finishes stopping, reduce the brake very slowly, a very small amount. Practice, 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 and a little bit more practice. That's how you're gonna get good at this. This is a skill, which means you have to practice it to get good. You can only acquire and practice a skill. You can't be given a skill. I mean, take, take a washing machine, for example very easy you don't need skill to operate one of those you may not know how to operate a washing machine but you can look the you can look at the instructions and go okay press that button set it to that degrees and press that button and it works no practice needed once you know that you're good brake pedal no i can tell you what to do which will help you get better at it but you've got to put in the hours you've got to put in the hundreds thousands of attempts of trying to be smooth before you actually get very good at it. It's just like drawing a circle. Someone can try and give you advice to help you draw a better circle, but how round that circle is gonna be comes down to how many times you've tried to do it. But if you don't try to be smooth with the brake, it won't get better or smoother on its own. If you're just hitting the brake quite hard and thinking, oh yeah, in a couple of years I'll be better, you probably still will be braking harshly for the rest of your life. You've got to try to get better. It will take time, but if you keep practicing it, you will see improvements over a period of time. And after a year or two, you will be at chauffeur standard. You'll be excellent if you're putting in the effort. For your driving test, you don't need to be perfect. So long as you're not really harsh, you will still pass. They're not looking for high levels of skill in a driving test. They're looking for safety, and within the law. Enough control, you need to convince them that you've got enough control that you're safe and getting that perfect chauffeur stop isn't necessary, but it is necessary if you wanna be a nice driver, that longer plan for the future of how you're going to, how you're gonna drive for the rest of your life really. When I talk about the driving test, I am talking about the UK driving test. I know I've got a lot of viewers from all over the world, so, just want to put that out there. There is the UK driving test. I'm certainly not an expert in all the driving tests throughout the world. I just know the UK one well because that's what I've been teaching people to pass for the last 11 years. It comes completely down to your driving examiner 
as to whether or not they pass or fail you for how harsh you are with the controls. They, they've got to feel like you're not putting people at danger. If you're braking so harsh that people behind you are struggling not to go into the back of you, they will fail you. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth inside the car. It can be a little bit jerky, but as long as you're braking smooth enough that everyone around you has time to react and you're not a hazard on the road, they will pass you. For the first five years of teaching people to drive, braking was a struggle. People would brake horrifically and it would really make learning very hard because they wouldn't stop where they wanted to stop and that would extend the amount of time it took them to learn. But for the last six years, I think, what I've been doing is before I even let them sit in this seat and try and drive the car, I get them to use the dual controls, handy that I've got those things, from the passenger seat to learn the brake. And it works wonders. I, I, I'm not going back because that's worked so well in helping my customers get good at the brake. Within, normally within half an hour, they get into a level of braking that would normally take them I don't know, six, seven, eight lessons, just because they, they're they only focusing on the brake. They're sitting in the passenger seat. I'm not trying to get them to do mirrors, steering, signal, gas, clutch gears, and everything, handbrake. It's just, there's one pedal. Let's try and get good at that first. I give them advice. I give them attempts. Firstly, I try to get them braking smoothly and finishing smooth at the end. Once they've got that done, then I say, right, try and stop by that lamppost. So there's a lamppost up ahead, I'll move the car, I'll leave it to them to do the braking. I'll say, you can start braking now, try and stop smoothly by that lamppost. So I'll call that target practice because that's actually quite hard as well. Being able to stop where you want to stop, is quite hard for a new driver. Quite often they'll stop too early or actually more often what they'll do is they'll, they won't brake enough because they don't want to stop too early. They won't brake much, they won't brake much. And when they get there, they'll brake really hard, which obviously, isn't very helpful. Being able to brake smoothly before you start using all the rest of the controls is really helpful for you because it gives you time. It gives you time to use your clutch. It gives you time to use your gears. It gives you time to steer. Instead of braking suddenly at the last moment, you're braking smoothly, you got that. Now you can start thinking about, right, clutch down, steer around, spend a little bit. Maybe need first gear now. Start checking to see if it's safe to go whilst you're still moving, whilst you're still slowing down. This video has been more about the control of the brake pedal to make the car stop smoothly, but there is another aspect to help you brake smoothly, and that is focusing on where you want to stop by. So if there's a give way line at the end of the road, you want to stay focused on that as you're slowing down, because that's going to help you judge whether or not you're braking too much or too little. So as you gradually press the brake pedal, you're going to start to feel like, aha, that feels about right. I'm slowing down enough now, so it feels like I'll stop a little bit too early, a little bit before the line. You always want to be a little bit too early. If you're focusing on where you're trying to stop by, that's really going to help you judge how hard you need to use the pedal. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood, who provides specialist learning insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. I hope that helps. I hope the video helps you brake more smoothly. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to get my future videos. I'm Richard, this is Conquer Driving, and until the next one, cheerio.